Hello children, myself G. Kishore Kumar, teacher in Telangana Model School, Meddodi, Sidhipet District. And today I would like to revise some most important topic in examination point of view that is sets. So children, you might have heard about sets, right? So we are going to revise on this particular chapter. But before we go for our revision, let us see how many marks are going to be covered from this chapter. Okay, children. So in first section, you already know, in section 1, there will be 7 questions of each 1 mark. So from this, you will get 1 question. So that means you are going to get 1 mark in this first section. Now, whereas in second section, out of six questions, you may get one question. So again, you may get one question. Now, this carries two marks. Not only this, in section three also, you will get one question. And this question carries how many marks? Four marks. That means altogether you are going to get 7 marks out of 40 marks. So you are going to get 7 marks out of 40 marks. That's really uh, good marks, right? 7 out of 40. So you can score very nicely. But it is not necessary that you will get 7 compulsory. So you may get 4 marks or 5 marks. Or 7 marks. Okay. So it depends. But definitely you are going to get. Minimum of 4 marks. And maximum of 7 marks. Okay. So I would like you to revise. All the definitions. Which I am going to teach now. So that you can answer all the questions. So all the best children. A set is a well defined collection of distinct objects. The objects in a set are called elements and sets are written by enclosing all of its elements between the brackets. Here you can see children, flower brackets are given, right? Let's see an example. So set containing 1, 2, 3, 4, so on. Sets are generally denoted by capital letters of English alphabet, that is A, B, C, so on. Let A is equal to set containing the elements. A, B, C, D, E. B equal to set containing elements 2, 4, 6, 8 and so on. Here C, C, D, E are elements of A whereas 2, 4, 6, 8 so on are elements of B. Now if you notice 2 belongs to B whereas 5 does not belongs to B. Sets can be represented in Rows to form or in set builder form. First, let us see about rows to form. If we are writing a set by listing the elements in it, then it is said to be written in the rows to form. Take a look at the set builder form. So, in set builder form, if we are going to write by defining its element, with a common property. We can say that set is in set builder form. So let us understand these two by taking few examples. So C is equal to set containing X as that X is a natural number smaller than 20. Now children we have to list, we have to write all the natural numbers that are less than 10. That means 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. This number should be enclosed in the brackets. And let us go for the second example. P is equal to set containing X as that X is an alphabet in the word beta. B-E-T-T-E-R. Children, we have already seen that in a set, the elements will never be repeated. Isn't it children? That means here in this word we have 
B E T T E R. That means E is repeated twice and T is also repeated twice. So when we are writing in in the form of a set, so what we are going to do? Good. We are going to write only P is equal to set containing B, E, T and R. That's it children. Only four letters we are going to write. Okay children. Now let us look at the set builder form. So here we have to check for a common property. Let us take one example. A equal to set containing 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. That means if you notice all these are multiples of 5. Therefore A is equal to set containing. I will take some variable. Let it be x colon that is such that x is here multiple of 5. And what is the last multiple children? 30. That means it is less than 35 right next multiple. So x says that x is multiple of 5 and x is less than 35. Let us take another example. D is equal to set containing 1 comma 1 by 2 comma 1 by 3 comma 1 by 4 comma 1 by 5. So here 1 can be written as 1 by 1. Then we have 1 by 2, 1 by 3, 1 by 4, 1 by 5. So again I will assume it as some variable x. So in denominators if you notice they are all like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Right? They are natural numbers. Only in denominator part I am talking about children. Actually those numbers are not natural numbers. 1 by 2, 1 by 3, they are not natural numbers. But in the denominator part if you see they are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So let us assume the variable as x. x says that x is equal to 1 by n comma n belongs to natural numbers. The denominator part is a natural number, right? And n is less than or equal to 5. So this is the set builder form of the given set. Let us move on to our next concept children that is empty set. So the word itself says empty. What do you mean by empty? Nothing in it, right? So a set which does not contain any element is called an empty set or a null set or even we call it as a void set also. That means empty set is called as a null set or even a void set also. So let us take few examples children now. First one, a is equal to set containing x such that x is a natural number less than 1. Now children what are the natural numbers? Yes, 1, 2, 3, 4, so on. Now, is there any natural number which is less than 1? No. That means, here in set A, there is no element. Because it says natural number less than 1. So, natural number start with 1. That is the least natural number is 1. So, there is no element which is less than 1 in this set. So, this is an example for empty set. Got it children? Let us go for next example also. That is z equal to set containing y such that phi less than y less than 6 where y is a whole number. Now here y is a whole number children. So what are whole numbers? 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, so on. Now between phi and 6, do you find any whole number children? No. That means this set z also has no element in it. So we call it as an empty set. Got it children? Now you understood very clearly right? What is an empty set? So in this set there won't be any element. So note children that empty set is denoted by flower brackets without any element in it or there is another symbol we call it as phi. Got it children? So next we will move on to our next concept that is subsets. If all elements of a set A are present in B, then A is said to be subset of B and it is denoted as shown children. So that means there should be two sets children A and B. And if you take A elements of A, all these elements of A should be there in B. Then we say A is subset of B. Let us take an example to understand it clearly. A equal to 
set containing 2, 3, 4, 5 and b is equal to set containing 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Now if you notice all the elements of A are there in B children. Then we can say that A is subset of B because B contains all the elements of A. Okay, got it children. There is one important thing to note here children that empty set is subset of every set. That means it is subset of A, subset of B. You take any set, empty set is subset of every set. Not only that one, every set is subset of itself. That means if you take a set A, A is subset of A. If you take a set B, B is subset of B. Got it children? Move on to our next concept that is finite set. A set which contains finite number of elements or countable number of elements we can say is called a finite set. Let us take an example. Here A is equal to set containing 2, 3, 4, 5. And let us take another example. D is equal to set containing A, S, D, F, L, K, J, H. Now if you notice these two sets children, there are countable number of elements, right? In A, I have four elements, that is 2, 3, 4, 5, right? In D, there are eight elements. So since there are only finite number of elements or countable number of elements, these two sets are called finite sets. Got it children? That means there will be only limited number of elements. Let us go to infinite sets. A set which contains infinite number of elements is called an infinite set. That means in this there will be uncountable elements. For example, set of natural numbers. n is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, so on. So in this case you don't know how many elements are there, right? How many numbers are there in that set? You don't know. So such sets are called infinite sets. Now let us take another set P, 2, 3, 5, 7, so on. These are all prime numbers, right? But how many prime numbers are there? Uncountable, right? So even this is also an example of an infinite set. Okay, children. Let us move to the cardinal number of a set. The number of elements present in a set is called its cardinal number. That means, let us take an example to understand it. A equal to A, B, C, D, E and N is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, so on. If you see A, A has only 5 elements, right? A, B, C, D and E. Then we say the cardinal number of A, that is N of A is 5. So your cardinal number of A is represented as n of a. So how many elements are there? 5. So we write n of a is equal to 5. Now what about uh, uh, cardinal number of n children? Set of natural numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, so on. Infinite. So cardinal number of natural numbers is infinite because you don't know how many elements are there in that, right? Now let us take another example to find the cardinal number c is equal to set containing x so that x is a alphabet in the word india i n d i a now here india means there are i n d i a five letters but in this one element of the set is repeated right i so first write down the set c is equal to i n d a because in set we don't write the repeated letters, right? So how many elements are there in C now? Yes, I and D, A. There are only four. That means the cardinal number of C, that is N of C is equal to four. I hope you understood the concepts very well, children. So children, with this, we come to the end of our first revision session. I hope you have understood all the concepts that are taught. In the next session, we are going to revise few more concepts and solve some of the most important problems that have already come across in your previous examinations, that is board papers. Okay, children? See you then. We'll meet in a